You have questions, and we have answers, and this is the Doom Eternal 21Q Review. That Doom Eternal is directed by Hugo Martin, who was the creative director on Doom 2016, and I think it's a change of director that gives Doom Eternal a completely new feel. No, and by the original, I am talking about the 2016 reboot. Doom Eternal is basically a brand new story with a brand new traversal style and all new controls. The amount of new elements introduced can be overwhelming at times, including all of the many upgrade trees and XP, but the main thing it introduces is your method of traversal. Doom Eternal now has you platforming, climbing up walls, and air dashing to get to the next objective. Doom Eternal immediately forces you out of your comfort zone based on its design. Ammo is very limited even when fully upgraded and you are never able to fully rely on one weapon throughout the game as a crutch as you were able to in Doom 2016. Doom Eternal makes you constantly evaluate your situation, and depending on whether you require ammo, armor, or health will depend on if you need to chainsaw, glory kill, or burn enemies. Doom Eternal is available almost everywhere. I played it on the PS4 Pro, but you can find it on the Xbox One, the PC, Stadia, and even later this year on the Nintendo Switch. Doom 2016 is on Game Pass, which leads me to believe that Doom Eternal will make its way to Game Pass, but the big question would be when. Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 are built with a single player campaign as their priority. Doom Eternal has a lot of collectibles and challenges throughout the game that you are unlikely to achieve initially. Master Levels and Slayer Gates are also challenges that await you and are some of the purest forms of fun in Doom Eternal. Unfortunately, id seems to have missed the mark on what made Doom 2016 such a success. I think id was worried that if they created a sequel that was just more of the same, it wouldn't be the success that Doom was in 2016. For any good sequel, change is required, but I don't think trying to force a serious story works here, especially when it's blended with some absurd moments and much of it is buried in the codex, which somehow gets a pass here when other games are chastised for hiding their story in the same manner. As of right now, there is a year one pass that you can get by purchasing anything above the standard version or buying separately. All we know about the year one pass is that within one year of release, there will be two campaign DLCs, although no details on length or scope has been given to these yet. Doom Eternal ditches all of the aspects of Doom 2016 in terms of multiplayer and introduces Battle Mode, which is a 2v1 arena where two players control demons and one player controls the Doom Slayer. Hugo Martin also made it seem like there might be more multiplayer modes coming down the road that are more in line with traditional shooters when speaking on the Joe Rogan Show. Playing on PS4 Pro, Doom Eternal looks like exactly the kind of game you expect to see near the end of a console generation, a game that is truly squeezing every piece of silicone in the machine to make something amazing and gorgeous, if you don't mind demon guts. With Mick Gordon returning, it was a pretty safe bet that the score would be more of the excellent work that was done in Doom 2016, which is exactly what is present here, along with some ethereal religious chanting that highlights the quiet moments. Sadly to say, I tried the game with the music completely off and it created a different game that was atmospheric and eerie. I feel that this is a way to truly experience the game and appreciate every audio detail that went into every weapon, demon, and surface. My main issue with Doom Eternal's controls is that it is asking too much from you for the average controller player. There is too much precision required in Doom Eternal as it introduces weak spots that are required for you to succeed. If you're playing on console with a the controller, then by the end of the game, the precision required will push you to the brink during lengthy arena battles or boss fights that don't have checkpoints. Trying to hit small spots from across the map requires switching weapons while also trying to switch between firing modes, changing grenades, operating your shoulder-mounted flamethrower, performing glory kills, using the chainsaw, and even more in the later game. It just feels like there is too much going on at once to feel completely fluid. Doom Eternal is fun in the most id way possible, not id the studio, I'm referring to the most primal and instinctive part of your brain. Doom Eternal gets you out of your consciousness and connects you to the world of the Doom Slayer and all there is to think about is killing demons. However, the missions can feel long and bloated and usually after one level, you're probably full. It's definitely not good to play with your family as you are trying to reclaim Earth back from the depths of hell while ripping and tearing in some gruesome methods. 
As for playing as a couple, you could pass the controller back and forth between sections, but Doom Eternal is a game about getting into a rhythm with all of your weapons and abilities. Passing the controller I don't think would be conducive to this need. Despite how many weapons are being fired or how many enemies were on screen at one time, the engine never faltered once. Doom Eternal seems like a perfect candidate for smart delivery or whatever Sony calls their analogous service. As good as Doom Eternal looks on the current consoles, it would be amazing if load times were less between levels and I'm sure it would look even better with a higher frame rate and better resolution. Upon arrival at some of these combat arenas, it seems like an insurmountable task, but upon quick decision making, you quickly figure out which targets are a priority and how to properly deal with them. All of this happens in the blink of an eye while you're performing glory kills for health, lighting demons on fire for armor, and using chainsaws to replenish ammo. The variety is also impressive from the locations, the enemy types, and glory kills that still caught me off guard towards the very end of the game. My main issue with Doom Eternal is that it doesn't evolve Doom 2016, instead it feels more revolutionary. Unfortunately, too many changes implemented just get in the way of the fun. A story that lacks clarity with most of the good stuff buried in Codex, new traversal methods that are clunky at times and hinder the experience, and not to mention an abundance of systems and upgrade trees that seem like filler as the power increases feel negligible. I think Doom Eternal is a very fun game, but with a litany of new features that actually get in its own way, this is not the sequel that I was hoping for. I hope you enjoyed the review, and if you did, then check out some of our other 21Q reviews, and consider subscribing.